Hello golfers, welcome back. Now we are heading to the back nine of Tanamera's garden course. We did pretty well on the front nine, I would say. We've got a couple of birdies and what can go wrong on the back nine, right? But according to the three decades of golf that I've played, well, almost three decades, I know that golf isn't perfect and there will be mistakes made along the way, but it's how we actually approach them after we have made the mistake. So today I'm going to share with you my thought process of what I actually tell myself when the mistake actually happens. If you have noticed that when I've made a certain mistake, be it I hit a short part, I duff or I talk, I tend to always laugh. And there is actually a reason behind it. When I was younger, I would scold vulgarities, yep, I would slam the club, maybe not break the club, but I would throw the club sometimes. And before I know it, I would have double bogeyed three holes in a row. Basically, you blank out because of the rage and anger. So now even I just laugh, so it keeps me in a positive Fine. state and also to remind myself that I'm privileged to play golf. So what is this thinking mindset that I have when a mistake is made? I call this the winning mindset. It's W-I-N. And wow, this has been taught to me by good. Coach Hanson. Thank you, Hanson. He's actually our sports psychologist for SGA, for the National Golf Squad. And W-I-N stands for what's important now. This teaches you to think about what's important right in front of you rather than thinking about what could happen later like you know what if i hit into the water what if i duff or what if i look silly in front of my friends or even in front of my viewers Hole 12, I took a driver as it's a red pin. Normally, I would hit an iron if the pin's in the middle Please or the back. The so from here, I got a lob wedge and I actually bladed the shot to the middle or back of the green. At this point of time, I felt disappointed. I felt embarrassed. I felt silly. And I was thinking of all the bad things that can go wrong from here but rather of th rather than thinking of this i actually thought of what's important now and it's to two part from where i am <laughs> still very fast even after the rain so thinking this four footer for par was really crucial for me and all the weeks of practicing the four and five footers has paid off Hole 13 is a short par 5. I'm going with a driver and play it over the trees. And this would leave me a distance of probably a 5 or 4 iron. Now the pin is a white pin. It's a middle pin on the right side. And I've gone with a high draw. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. It went yeah. straight. And the ball's on the short side of the green. Now when normally you're on the short side of uh, the green or the hole, you would have to use either a bump and run or a lob shot. And in this case, I went with a medium height lob shot. The ball landed soft, spun a little bit, and I came back with a birdie. Yep, thank you. Now hole 14 is a par 3 with a large green. Yes, it's a large green. If you don't know, the, from the front to the back, it's about 30 meters. So generally, it's really huge. And most of the time, I will plan to play the ball in the middle of the green. I find that the back left pin is the easiest one, as you've got lots of green to work with. Pretty la Thank you. This hole, in my opinion, is the most difficult hole on this course. And I think this hole is excellently designed. You've got a decently large fairway. However, on your second shot, 
it can be really deceiving as the green is, I would say it's long from left to right and it's not easy to get eh? the ball on the green. Eh? I was aiming the wrong tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. <laughs> I said, what a swing. I aimed the wrong tree. So my ball ended up in the bunker and I needed a really high soft shot and maybe hope for the ball to spin a little bit. So generally for this shot, my feel and technique would be an open club face with a long to short swing. And you notice that I tend to waggle my club head this is just to feel uh, my hand soft, my wrist soft, so that the ball doesn't come out really fast and hard. Now I'm left with a tap in <laughs> for par. Hole 16 is a, another short par 4. Uh, the pin is in the middle. If the pin is red, then I would use an iron or a three wood so that I have a full wedge going I'm 30 towards to the, the green. Pin. And now I'm left with a 30 meter shot. I got lots of green to work with, so let's fly a high one. So after blading the first one and not hitting this really well, I guess this is a distance I have to work on. And I will head back to the range and work on this distance. So much for flying a high one. That wasn't a really good shot. But what's really important now is for me to get the ball onto the green. And I've accepted it that if I walk away with the bogey, it's fine too. You just do not want to compound your mistakes. Okay, I still can save par. That's really important. Yes, sir. Hole 17 is a par 3 with the pin tucked at the back. I think the best place for the ball to be would be on the right side, left side, just anywhere on the green. It's, it's a good pin position today. And a two part from there is perfect. A par is great on this hole. Now the one skill that you have to really get I good really at that was gonna and to do well at yeah. garden course uh, yeah. would be your oh. bunker play. If you do need help, please approach a friend who is good at it or even better, hire a coach to help you with it. On this last hole, I took a driver as I feel good and I've been striking it well the whole day. The pin is on the left side, it's a front red pin and aiming towards the right would be the best play for me. So safe ah. I hope um, you've enjoyed this video and learned about this winning mindset that I've been using for quite a while. Try to adopt it and use it. You might see a difference in your game. Maybe, maybe not. Let me know. I'll see you guys next week and have a great week. Bye-bye.